Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Rick Hilligus. Uh, I work for uh, Sun Microsystems, and I work on JavaDB, which is Sun's branded distribution of the Apache Derby open source database. And I'm going to tell you a little something, give you an overview of what JavaDB Derby is. I'm going to tell you a little something about our community. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, a, sort of a lightning overview of the history of this code. Um, I'm going to tell you what our sweet spots are, what the use cases are, where we've gotten a lot of traction. And then I'm going to give you uh, sort of a, a whirlwind tour of our feature set, um, uh, mostly focusing on features that we've recently introduced, since those are the ones that um, we have a lot of emotional attachment to right now. Okay, so what is uh, JavaDB? It is a 100% pure Java database. Uh, that means that you can embed it inside any Java application. It runs right there in the VM. There's no process switching between your application code and, uh, and the database. It is co-bundled in the Java 6 JDK. So if you've got Java 6, you've probably got uh, JavaDB on your laptop right now. Uh, what are its major strengths? I would say that its major, major strengths are Java's major strengths in that it builds on the security and pluggability of the Java language and platform themselves. This code has been out there for more than 13 years. So people have been beating up on it for a long time. It is rock solid. And after 13 years, we have accumulated quite a feature set, including a lot of features which you would only expect to find, normally expect to find in an enterprise caliber database. And yet, all of this, you get all of this, and it only fits in a 2.5 meg jarball. The code fits in 2.5 meg. and from day one, we designed this to be a zero admin database. That is, a database that you could embed in a shrink-wrapped Java application and give to your end user who wouldn't have to have a DBA, who wouldn't have to know, wouldn't care that there's a database bundled inside your application. Finally, JavaDB is, uh, is a rebranding of Apache Derby, and that means it comes with the Apache open source license. Uh, the Apache license, as you're probably aware, is uh, in that family of permissive uh, open source licenses like BSD and some of the Creative Commons licenses. And this means that other than putting a little attribution, a little thank you to Apache in your notice file, you own this code. You can take this code and do anything you want with it. You can change this code. You can take it private. You can bundle it with your own application. And you can license it and sell it under terms that you want. And you don't own anyone one cent. You don't owe Apache one cent. You don't owe Sun Microsystems any money. You don't owe IBM any money. It's yours. OK, so let me tell you a little something about the community. Uh, there are five of us from Sun who are active committers working on the project right now. There are four committers from IBM. There are two Wildcats out there in the community. And we have a very active user list. The user list is what really drives our feature set from release to release. Um, this is very much a community-driven feature set. So, the cadence we're on these days is we solicit input from our user community. Um, there's a whole mechanism under Apache by which uh, the users can vote for the features that they want to see in the release. And that's what we um, tuck into. We turn out feature releases uh, about once every nine months, nine months to a year. And then in between the feature releases, we come out with, uh, with a solid maintenance release, which bundles up bug fixes and uh, message localizations. All right, this is a history of wh where this code has been. Uh, it originally started out as Cloudscape. Uh, it was an independent company that we founded back in 1996. Uh, we had a good run 
for a couple years. We built this um, pure Java database. It had some extra bells and whistles in it that Derby doesn't have right now, uh, including some very interesting object extensions and uh, a very interesting synchronization technology. Uh, at the height of the craziness of the, the, uh, the dot-com bubble, we were acquired by Informix. Uh, and then as the dot-com turned dark, uh, Informix was acquired by IBM. Uh, for a while, uh, uh, IBM took it private and just uh, use it for its own private purposes. Uh, but it turns out that IBM has a lot of private purposes for, uh, for this code. It's used all over um, IBM's uh, product set, as well as over Sun's product set. And uh, IBM decided that they wanted some help in, um, in maintaining and extending this product. So they open sourced it as the Apache Derby project in 2004, a year later. Sun joined the effort and donated a team to work on the code as well. All right, this slide is the, the nicest slide I've got here, and it's the nicest slide because I didn't make it. It was made by a guy named Chris Dance, uh, who works for a company called Papercut, they, and they're, uh, they're a company that uses, that built their product on top of JavaDB. And this is his picture of what he thought was really cool about JavaDB and what sort of distinguished it from the other relational databases. And what distinguished it in his mind was that it, it covers a whole spectrum of application use cases from the very high end or the low end of the high end of the enterprise caliber databases all the way down to small devices where you might be tempted to use something like Berkeley DB. Java DB runs on the CDC small device platform all the way up to um, the uh, Java Enterprise editions. So it runs everywhere. You can see the sweet spot is in the middle. Uh, it's uh, with embedded uh, applications that run on desktops and laptops. And also for small business scale applications, applications which have, say, hundreds of concurrent users. All right, and that's my segue to my use cases. So uh, the original sweet spot that we designed this for was embedded, shrink-wrapped Java applications where, as I said, you don't need a database administrator and your end users don't want to care that there's a database bundled inside your product. We've also gotten traction in a very interesting space, which is applications, data-rich applications that you download over the web into your browser. So everything comes over the, over the web into your browser. The application, the database code, the data in the database all comes over into your app. And we've also gotten traction uh, as a middle tier cache. <coughs> and, um, and what is particularly exciting about the middle tier cache scenario is, uh, is a feature which I'll talk about in a bit that we introduced in the latest feature release. And here, in, in this scenario, what you're doing is you're using JavaDB in the middle tier to scale out your access to a giant database in the back end, an Oracle or a DB2 or a Postgres or something. And you essentially have a, a silo of data uh, per JavaDB in the middle tier. And as I said, we've gotten traction uh, <coughs> in uh, small business scale uh, applications. All right, the embedded use case. What makes JavaDB so good for the embedded use case? Our footprint. This is a 2.5 meg jar ball. The fact that you don't need a database administrator and it's so easy to integrate with your application. You just drop the jar ball into your class path. All right. And there's really not much to say here. This is what it looks like. There's JavaDB running in the very same uh, VM as your client code. And you're, you just use the, uh, the embedded JDBC driver. Uh, you speak um, SQL over JDBC, JavaDB in your VM. All right. The browser use case. 
So I said that the, um, the jar ball is 2.5 meg, but with PAC 200 compression, that comes down to about 800 K. So it's not that big, and it's quite feasible um, to build an application where you're actually loading in the, um, the database code itself over the web into your um, browser. And there's an interesting um, demo of this. Uh, if you go to the JavaDB site, follow this link, you'll, um, you, can, you can see how it works. All right. Now, there's not much to say about this picture. It's pretty much the same picture that you saw before. And it's just that the VM that your application code is running in is the same VM that the database is running in. And it's just the VM that's running inside your browser. So it's actually a special case of embedded usage. All right. Uh, middle tier. So this exciting feature that I was telling you about that we introduced in the last major feature release is in-memory database. And so this, um, so previously, people have built uh, uh, big scale outs using JavaDB in the middle tier, but as a traditional uh, database which is persisting its data to disk. So now we have temporary in-memory databases that come and go with your VM, and they screen. All right. And here again, the picture is very familiar. It's once again an embedded um, uh, situation. You've got JavaDB running inside the same VM as your app server. And then you just scale out your app servers uh, one silo of data uh, per app server, caching data, which is stored ultimately in an enterprise caliber database in the back end. All right. And then there's a small business use case. So this is classic client server. This is what you're used to with um, probably any um, relational database that you're using today. Um, one of the things that is really great about JavaDB is the fact that we hew very closely to the ANSI SQL standard. And we, frankly, that's, that is, we, we, we kind of, since we were created, in the, um, the mid-90s, we had the advantage of having a standard in front of us, which the databases that were developed during the 1980s didn't. So this is the real deal. Uh, the good thing about implementing the standard SQL is that it makes portability to other databases very easy. And in fact, this paper cut example I was showing you, um, if, if you, it, in certain installations, certain customers that they've sold their product to, they've reached the point where JavaDB just is not big enough for their data sets. So JavaDB, we've tested it on data sets of like half a terabyte to a terabyte. But if you've got like five terabytes of data, then you're going to want an enterprise caliber database. But the nice thing about JavaDB is, since the SQL is so standard, it's pretty easy to swap out JavaDB and swap in an enterprise caliber database if your um, business gets to that point. All right, so it's got features that you would expect from an enterprise caliber uh, database, but uh, features that you would want in a small business uh, application as well. The, all the concurrency that you need, uh, row level locking, for instance. It's got plenty of security. We'll talk about security again later, but um, I'm calling out the network security. The, the encryption on the wire and the encryption on the disk. Uh, we've got SQL roles, which make the administering of fine-grained SQL permissions um, very easy. If you have a um, small business uh, size application where you have to administer um, a fair number of users. And it has single node asynchronous replication um, for failover. All right, now the small business use case is uh, basically uh, in addition to the database engine itself, which was that 2.5 meg jar ball, we've got another smaller jar ball, which is a network server, and we've got another even smaller jar ball, which is your client driver. So your client JDBC driver is off on your desktop machine, and it's talking uh, over the web. Uh, you, you speak JDBC to it, and it speaks DRDA to, um, to our network server. And then once you get to the network server, it's an embedded situation again. Uh, JavaDB is embedded inside the same uh, VM as that network server. Okay, so now I want to go and I want to talk about our feature set. 
uh, um, all of our uh, capabilities, talk about our security, want to talk about our pluggability story, and then I want to uh, just give another plug for um, in-memory database. Okay, well, words, 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 words. We got lots of um, slides like this. Uh, <laughs> what you're supposed to take away from this slide is that this is the real deal. This is a full relational database. It's got everything that you would expect from it from a relational database. It's got tables, views, constraints, indexes, triggers. It's got backup and restore. It's got crash recovery. Uh, we've got language sensitive order. Uh, we've got something called table functions that I'll tell you about in a little bit. Um, and this is just a just a small number of of the features that we've got. It's um, it's quite impressive. All right. Security, I think we have a very good security story. Um, first and foremost, because we build on the Java security story. Uh, we fit into the Java security framework, and you administer the, uh, the, uh, the security of JavaDB with the same policy file that you use to administer the security of your Java application. So uh, you can use that policy file to protect JavaDB from uh, other uh, 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 applications that may be running in your VM and vice versa. You can protect them from JavaDB from someone's errant code that may be running in JavaDB. We have pluggable authentication, uh, which is to say that uh, you can plug in any LDAP-based um, uh, authentication scheme uh, into JavaDB. We have a little bridge to that. Uh, we also have uh, built-in authentication where you can store the credentials in the database. And we also have a very thin interface. If you, interfa if you implement this interface, you can basically plug into any, any authentication scheme that you want. It's very powerful, very extensible, really easy to use. We have uh, fine-grained SQL access control, the grant revoke commands that you're familiar with uh, from other databases. And uh, as I said, we also have roles. So the administering of those fine-grained access controls uh, is very easy. Uh, it scales up with your, with your user base. As I said, we have database encryption, and we have encryption on the wire. So uh, you're, you're doubly protected there. OK. Now I want to talk about pluggability. I think one of the really cool things about JavaDB is the fact that the procedural language and the functional language that you use is not some vendor-specific PL SQL or SQL PSM or Transact SQL, but it's Java. It's the language that you're familiar with working, working with. And this means that you can take your application code and you can factor it in such a way you can factor your integrity constraints, uh, your domain constraints, uh, in such a way that you can use them everywhere. You can use them in your client code, you can use them in the middle tier, and you can use them inside the database. And it also means that if you make a design error, I, I don't know if any of you have ever made a design error, but you discover that you've put your code in the wrong tier, no problem. You can move it around. You can move it from the client into the database because it's just Java. Another thing that's really cool in development is that you can debug your application in embedded mode. So your client code, your application code, is running in the same VM as your database procedure code and you're just using a single debugger to step through the whole thing. It's pretty powerful. All right. Functions also are coded in Java. And this makes it very easy for you to take advantage of all sorts of off-the-shelf um, uh, software that's out there to use in your functions. OK? So your functions are written in Java. You put them in your query. Uh, you do the filtering inside the query, inside the database, limiting uh, the number of probes that you have to do, and limiting the size of the data set that ultimately gets shipped back to the client. It's a very powerful model. We have something called table functions, which I think is really cool. And what a table function is, is any data set, any external data set, which you can represent as a JDBC result set, 
can then be declared to JavaDB as though it were a table in the database. And you can join it with your tabular data in the database. It's a really powerful programming model. So uh, for instance, in memory collections, uh, uh, tables in external databases, all of these can be presented to JavaDB as table functions, and you can join them with your, um, with your data that's in JavaDB. Another interesting feature that we have is generated columns. And what a generated column is, it essentially allows you to build a function index. So it allows you to take a piece of your query and pre-compute that piece of your query, store it in a column in a table, and then build an index on that column. And it re really makes your query scream, depending on the query. Um, Finally, uh, user-defined sort order. If, uh, if you're interested in defining your own uh, sort order uh, for, um, for text data, uh, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, go to the JavaDB site. There's a blog you can um, follow off of that that shows you how easy it is to code your own Java collation and then to bind that collation to the sort order of the database. All right, and now a last plug for in-memory database. Uh, this is something that we uh, introduced uh, around the time of Java 1 with our latest feature release. We're going to put some more effort into this in the next release uh, to make it even more capable. But it's a really, uh, it's a really useful feature. So uh, as I said, it allows you to really scream in the middle tier if you're building a caching layer there. Uh, it allows you to, uh, to build applications where you're just, for instance, monitoring applications where you just have transient streams of information that you're interested in slicing and dicing them while your application is up, but when your application goes away, you really don't care about keeping them. And it also makes it really easy to, uh, to write test rigs. And this includes test rigs for applications which are destined to be deployed in production against someone else's uh, enterprise caliber database. So Oracle or DB2. Well, you don't need the Oracle or the DB2 on your laptop. All you need is JavaDB. Because the SQL is portable, you can write your tests so that they run against JavaDB on your laptop, and they test the functions that you're going to be deploying in production. And the whole thing just cleans itself up because it's an in-memory database. It's, it's a really, um, people are really getting traction with that. All right. And if you want to learn more, just Google up JavaDB or Google up Apache Derby. Uh, these two websites will take you to a wealth of information. Uh, it's a friendly community. Come and pepper us with questions. Um, come and lobby for the features that you want to see in the next release. All right, thanks. The question was, the question was, how does it compare to hypersonic? Now, um, I am not going to get into the mud wrestling pit and, um, uh, and, and mud wrestle with many other databases, <coughs> um, but uh, hypersonic is, um, has gotten a lot of traction, particularly because they had in-memory database uh, before we did. But people don't tend to deploy in production on hypersonic because it has recoverability problems. What about XML is the question. There is an XML data, data type, but uh, we do not really have uh, great XML support. Um, so uh, XML is a huge investment uh, on the part of a, um, of, of, of a database. Uh, I think that DB2 has something like 100 people working on their XML support. So, you know, we're, we're 11 people. Um, so, sorry. Not soon. Not very, not very soon. However, you're welcome to come into the community and, 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 and help us um, build out this data type. What is the answer to the sharding story? Uh, we don't do um, sharding on our own, so you have to do sharding um, uh, in your application. And you have to, and the same thing about um, uh, partitioning your, uh, if, you're in, if you're building a middle tier cache. 
Um, we don't provide tools for that. You have to build that, uh, that partitioning of, of, um, of your backend database. Uh, well, we grew up as, as, as a database that persists to disk. So that's where, and, and we only introduced the in-memory database uh, at Java 1 this year. So that's what people have been doing all along for the last 13 years. They've been persisting to disk. So the question is, suppose that you wanted to write your, uh, your, your database functions and procedures in some other language other than Java, but the, 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 uh, it's a language that can be compiled down to run on the, on, the, um, on the VM. And the answer is absolutely. All you have to do is be able to bolt a uh, result set um, <coughs> face onto that, onto that external data source. And then that can be encoded in any language that you want that runs on the VM. Um, I'm going to try to paraphrase your question, and I may be garbling it and answering another question that I want to answer, but um, then, then you'll keep me honest. So, uh, so the question was, what about um, serializing objects uh, into the database? Is that a, a fair statement of the question? Okay, so there's, uh, there are a couple answers to that question. Uh, one answer is, no, we don't do that. Uh, the other answer is, well, of course we do that. Um, you can. You just have to write your own serializa serialization lo logic, and you can serialize it into a large binary object, or uh, into a blob. And the third answer to that question is: We used to have really screaming uh, support for objects in the database, and this was unfortunately removed before the code was open source. But it was only lightly removed, and it was the reason it was removed was because the API to it was not uh, a SQL standard API, and we're hewing to the SQL standard. It would be fairly easy to bolt a SQL standard API onto that logic, which is in the code right now. It's just not exposed. So it used to be you could put any serializable object inside a column, and it would be very easy to recover that. We just have to do a little work. Um, and I would be very happy to, uh, if someone wants to help me out with this, to work with someone on that, I'd be very happy to write a functional spec and work with anyone here um, who's interested in doing that. All of our features, including table functions, are part of the SQL standard, although we have a slightly different, uh, because we, we, we are, we're exploiting the, the result set, we're, we're, we have an extension of the standard there. But that's all, uh, table functions are part of the uh, uh, are part of the SQL feature set. Generated columns are part of the SQL feature set. Um, everything I've talked about is compatible with the standard or in the standard. Absolutely. All right, so I'm going to try to paraphrase what you said because there's a bunch of questions in there. So w one of the questions in there was, could you write a, a blogging application with this? Yes? S support a blogging application with JavaDB? Or a small-scale e-commerce? Sure, sure, a small-scale. Small small scale e commerce. Okay, let's uh, let's say that. Another uh, another question was how do you, do you compare JavaDB to the performance of say MySQL or Postgres or okay okay. So uh, absolutely, you could write an e commerce application on top of JavaDB, uh, and people do and people have. Um, uh, blogging applications, um, you know, uh, if, if what you're doing is just serving up um, uh, web pages, you could definitely use JavaDB the same way that you could use MySQL. But I think you're, 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 you're up against a, a, um, a question about whether relational databases are the right tool to solve that kind of problem, which is essentially uh, a, a key value lookup. And there's other, there's other databases that you could use to solve that problem, that people do use to solve that problem, that, um, that if you have to scale up to, gigantic, uh, to a gigantic scale, might be better than using a relational database. So, um, okay, now the next question was, how do we compare to MySQL and Postgres? We ran some benchmarks a couple years ago, but uh, we did not publish the results. We're a small team. The actual getting into the actual business of benchmarking is is a lot of money. Um, but uh, the experiments we ran showed that all of the open source databases 
And by all of the open source databases, I mean MySQL, Postgres, and JavaDB. Those are the, the, the ones we compared. Came in at about the same, um, um, same performance. So on different, on, on depends what the particular query was that you were running. Sometimes one was better than the other. A little better, sometimes one was a little worse. But in general, um, that's where our benchmarking, um, um, uh, what our benchmarking results were. If you're interested in the results, um, you can go and look them up. Uh, it's a paper by Dr. Olaf Sandstor, and it's uh, available from the Apache Derby website. It's also available from the Sun site. Okay, and another one. I forgot this question. The question: What about your tooling? Okay, so um, we don't have a lot of tools. Basically, you use someone else's tools. Uh, someone else's tools that uh, that w that are generic and that work with any database. So, in terms of things like um, uh, uh, tools like uh, tools like Squirrel or something, they they work with JavaDB. Um, all of the IDEs, you know, Eclipse, NetBeans, they work with um, with JavaDB in terms of writing a, a, a data-rich application. Um, we have command line tools, and we have plenty of um, diagnostic hooks so that you can, you know, get under the hood and see what's going on inside the database. But uh, fancy tools, that's not our that's not our long suit. It's easy to write a migration script. Yeah. Yep, and there's a and there's an, another Apache project called DDL Utils, which is all about doing that. So you want to truncate your data. Would you do me a favor? And would you come into the community and raise that issue? Because we are in we are we are right now we are defining our requirements for the next release, and we're looking for for that kind of feedback to tell us what to build for the next release, which will come out in the spring. We'd love that feedback. Thanks. And uh, you don't, we're, we're not asking you to do the work. <laughs> okay. It's, it, it's not like me with the question about um, uh, 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 storing objects in the database. Uh, we'll do the work. Just tell us what you want. Thanks. Am I, am I aware of any uses of JavaDB which are not embedded and which are big. Big, is that, that the much. question? Big, yeah. big, persistent? Yes. Something that touches the enterprise side. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody came to us at Java 1 this year and said that they had built this, this application which has tens of thousands of, um, of users built on top of JavaDB. And um, it, it's, a, it's a telecom application. So the question is, uh, fir first of all, there was a shameless plug for Derby over here. There's uh, someone who loves Derby. Mm -hmm. And second, there was, uh, the question was, what's, essentially, what's the difference between Derby and JavaDB? Um, so they are bit for bit the same. It's the same documentation. The only difference between JavaDB and Derby is that Sun um, sells support under the JavaDB brand. So that means that if, you, if, if your application was a runaway success and you needed 24 by 7 support, you could buy that from some. But bit for bit, for bit they're, they're the same. Um, both IBM and uh, Sun are very scrupulous about not forking this code line. Um, everything that we do that both IBM and Sun does is poured back into the community. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat>